Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel for another video on War Thunder. This one is on the Yak 141. A jet that, personally speaking, I absolutely love. The design is out of this world, it's unique, and to be honest with you, it's something I never expected from Russia in general, especially at this time frame, considering the amount of economic struggles coming from the Soviet bloc. That's a good way to put it. So, uh, before we get into the video, a bit of shameless sponsor promo. Ironic that it's coming from World of Warships. If anyone does wish to and want to sign up over the next few days and give it a go, please do use the link in the description. You get 500 doubloons, 7 days premium, 2 million credits, tier 4 premium, and a 6 point commander to go with it. So, yeah, 100%. It is a good way to start the game and it is something different. Especially considering isometric battles are just back, so it is one hell of a way to challenge yourself. I quite like isometric battles. It is 5v12, so. It is good crack, it is good crack to do. Anyways, let's get into the video on the Yak 141. So, originally started life in 1987, if I remember correctly, and was unfortunately cancelled in 1991. With only four ever being built, in which I believe one was only ever fully functional, or two maybe. And then the other two didn't even, they, they were finished, but they weren't even painted or anything. So, to my knowledge, they never got built. My knowledge, so yeah, my only one ever actually got in the air, which is pretty sad to see because it is such a unique plane. Now, one thing I have yet to see for this plane in game is the access to R73s, which it could carry two of. However, I don't know if that is a reason for balances or why it hasn't got them yet, but. I will digress and leave that to Gaijin. So let's talk a bit about the plane's performance. So, the engine is the star of the show for this here. It has got 15,580 KGF thrust, which is art fucking standing. It's unbelievable. I'm nearly sure this is the most powerful engine in the game at the minute, in regards to being a fighter jet. It essentially will get you in the air and get you to 11,000 meters within a minute or two. It is out of this world, to be truthful with you. And it is one of the best ways to play this yet, personally speaking. Get off the runway, get altitude, and use your radar, your TWS, and lock the targets at 60, 70 kilometers, and send an R-27 ER in their direction. Very capable missile, very capable radar, and to be truthful with you, I think the radar is more capable than the MiG-29's radar. As well as I like the fact that with the radar, it allows you to look and lock where you're looking so you could have r27 er selected have it in head mounted display mode and have the radar back in your head mounted display so you in theory you could pixel snipe from extreme ranges with it so to me that's what makes it so unique and so powerful as you can see from the game plan in the background one thing i do love to do is hit the altitude pick my targets drop the missiles and rtb now there is sometimes I do dogfight and I do get punished for it. I will be truthful with you, I get punished very fucking badly for it. But you can dogfight in this thing. It's not like it's a flying brick. It's got 25 second turn time, a very powerful thruster, you've got 60 countermeasures, so you do have some leeway to do a dogfight. You can hold your own in most aspects, but in regards to dogfighting a Mirage or a MiG-29, you're not really going to win it. F-16 though, Tornado, F-14, truthfully speaking it's going to be down to the skill of the pilot. However, my personal playstyle of it is, I will get up the altitude, dump my missiles, and use my radar and my advanced systems on to my advantage. Might as well play the plane to its advantage as an interceptor rather than a fighter. So, what about its ground capacity? What's its ground pounding like? To be honest with you, it's okay, but it's not what this plane is designed. It is a naval fighter, or a detail fighter, that is more of an interceptor than anything else. So, it does get access to 500 pound, well 500 kg, so used to playing the British, same part. 500 kg, parachute and freefall, so standard forged bombs as Russia, I don't get why they say forged from some of the Russian bombs, really don't get that. It gets 1600 kilos, access to the typical 500 incendiary bombs. I'm guessing that's good for grinding out parts on it, maybe. Uh, S130F20. Very good rockets. 
fucking love them for heli rushing at the start. I haven't heli rushed in a while. We'll also declare that before people go, oh, he's a fucking heli rusher. Haven't done it in a long time. Haven't done it in a long time. The Stusk access to your typical 250 kilogram parachute bombs and free fall. Also gets access to S24Bs, which I hate with a passion. Fucking hate them rock with a passion. Never was able to use them correctly. It also gets access to S8 KOs, which I do love. They're they're out of this world them rockets. So yeah, there is quite a potential to do a lot of damage as well as S5Ks, 128. So if you like SNEBs, S5Ks are great crack. Same as this, it KOs. You also get the troll loader of 423mm DSHs. However, you're not really gonna do much to be truthful with you with them. In regards to missiles, you get access to R60Ms, R27ETs, R27ERs, R27Ts, and R27Rs. Now personally speaking, I run two R27Ts and two R27ERs. However, I was trying to run. I tried, but unfortunately you can't run a mix of R27ETs and ERs. Would it be nice to have two of each? However, you have to have one or the other. I don't know why. I'm guessing it's for balancing reasons, but I sort of thought it was a bit odd. But I digress to guys in entertainment on that one, on which way they want to balance their load arts. But yeah. Anyways. What do I think of the jet? Truthfully speaking, excellent interceptor. Boom and zoom tactics can hold its own if it gets into a dogfight, however, avoid it personally speaking. Use your radar and your missiles and your engine to your advantage. Get your altitude, drop your load, and get back to base and rinse and repeat. Now, is it worth the time to grind? 100%. It's unique, looks apart, and it's wonderful to fly. It is a gem to fly in every aspect. And it's a jet I would love to see more of. Very rarely see them in game. Everyone's playing all this, met all the MiG 29s and all that type of stuff. But where's the love for the unique planes? This plane is a gem in general, and I'd love to see more of it. Anyways, with that there, everyone, I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and I'd like to invite everyone to join us over on Discord, as I want to try and build a more, an act more active Discord community, especially to try and get more things going, as I'd love to get back to doing tournaments again, doing more giveaways, that type of thing. Especially since I'm now starting to get back on my feet again. The production quality is still a bit piss poor, as many people know, my heart's burnt down a few months ago, and I'm still fighting through things with insurance and trying to get things sorted. As well as the fact that a lot of my production equipment was damaged and cannot be used currently, so I am using a very ad hoc, ad hoc setup to stream and to make content with. So if anyone does wish to, please do join us on Discord or catch us on Twitch as I would love to see you, love the game with you, and remember, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh my god, such a cheesy way to end it. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Please like and subscribe, and I shall hopefully see you in-game or over on Twitch or in the Discord.